Peak oil is probably one of the more misunderstood terms that has sort of crept a little bit into our vocabulary uh, for the first time. Uh, it's easier to start out, in my opinion, by what it isn't. It is not running out of oil. And too many people, when they're asked about their view of peak oil, say, I just don't believe we'll ever run out of oil, and they're absolutely correct. What peak oil means is you peaked. And, and, you're, and, and, and that defines the limits to growth. And from all the data we have, from individual wells profiles, where we have hundreds and thousands of wells, from individual fields that have peaked, from basins like the North Sea that have peaked, you don't have a very, a very long plateau. You tend to basically have a production profile that when, when, once you peak, you come down the other side by as rapid as 10 to 25% per year. Now the good news is, once you get down to a, a base of about 10 to 15 to 20% of where you peaked, you then tend to level out as long as you keep drilling and, and injecting uh, things and so forth, and that tail can last for 200 years. The problem is that it's just a tail. And, the, and, the, and, and all of that would be relatively uninteresting and unimportant if we had peaked in the use of oil and gas. But unfortunately, the oil and gas demand is still very young because we've spent the majority of the last hundred years limiting people that used oil and gas to Western Europe, the United States of America, Canada, and Japan. And in the last 30 years, we have now entered a world we call globalization and most of the people in the world don't live in the industrial companies. They live in what used to be called the underdeveloped world, and ironically we now appropriately call it the developed world. It's where all the population growth is, and their per capita energy consumption, their per capita oil consumption is minuscule to what ours is, and they want to live like us. So we've entered a world where the demand models are literally going like that, and there is a stunning amount of data that is basically arguing very loudly that we might have already peaked. And the, and the, and the singular big, biggest issue that, in, in my opinion, will define how long the 21st century can last, let alone whether we could ever even dream of making it through the 21st century, is how we cope with the gap between the, in, between the inexhaustible planned growth for oil and a dwindling amount of oil we can use. And that's effectively called peak oil. The sort of godfather of the peak oil movement was a guy named M. King Hubbard, who was a senior scientist at Shell Oil Company. He actually produced his first major paper in Physics Magazine in 1949, when he observed the fact that with the apparent indication that, 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 that global demand for oil was going to just starting to grow, that it would probably be around 50 years before we actually had a peak of global oil. Almost no one read that article. What people remember is in San Antonio in 1956, when much to the chagrin of Shell Oil Company, who tried to keep their senior scientist mum because they didn't want to look like a bunch of nutcases, uh, Dr. Cu Hubbard came to the American Association of Petroleum Geologists, and made this major presentation that based on all the known data, uh, it would appear that in the United States of America, we are now approaching the 50% mark of all of the oil that we will ever use. And once we cross that mark, the downside will be like that. And that will mark the peaking of U.S. oil. And it was so interesting. He became, a, you know, famous within his industry for that. And about 10 years later, he became totally discredited because we hadn't run out of oil. In 1970, there were some, he was being attacked quite viciously by some of the energy economists that effectively said, remember that old geezer from Shell Oil Company who 15 years ago said the United States was gonna run out of oil? Look, we've never produced more when we peaked. And as far as we know from the best data we have in December 1970, uh, we had the highest amount of recorded oil ever produced in the United States. And once it started down, no one paid any attention to it because we discovered Alaska. We, we knew that even if there's just Prudhoe Bay, that's enormous and there's probably 10 Prudhoe Bays. 
And so no one really cared that still the lower 48, we all knew that was mature. And it, it really wasn't until about 1985, 86 that people started saying, isn't this amazing? Even with Alaska coming on, now we've found everything in Alaska, we still peaked in December 1980, 1970. Uh, when do I think we're gonna peak? I, I look very carefully every month at the data put out by the Department of Energy in the United States. It's called our monthly energy report. Way back at the back of this 150 page document is table 111B, world crude oil output and month by month. And, and uh, a couple of years ago, I thought it was interesting to see that we, that we finally, for the first time ever in crude oil, crossed 74 million barrels a day in April. And then in May, we jumped up to what's been revised now finally up to 74.3 million barrels a day. Then we had two other months at 74, and then we dropped back to 73. And as of June, which is the last, they now have July, the first month is always revised. So in, Ju in June of, seven, of 2007, we're down to 72.8. So I say in a brief two years, we're off a million and a half barrels a day. And if you look at the underlying data, why? Too many countries are now in irreversible decline and there are not that many countries that have any growth left, and so I think the odds are fairly high that at best case, we will slowly come back to say 74. But if, we, if, if a year from now we're still in the low 73s or 72, then, then I think the odds are very high that peak oil is past tense. Now, bigger question, the world's using 86 the, all the forecasts of next year, we're going to use 88 million barrels a day of petroleum. If we're only producing 73 of crude, how do we get there? Natural gas liquids, which is basically primarily coming, it's, it's the associated gas in old oil fields. As oil fields lose their pressure, they cough up the gas that was in in attached to the oil molecule that created the enormous pressure, and that creates a gas cap. And so liquids kind of are the last residue of oil. So we've had a very surprisingly steady growth in global liquids from about six to 12 million barrels a day over the last 15 years. But t taking that from 12 to 15 is almost impossible. So if we peak in crude oil output, we might have a little bit longer of coasting along on a plateau of, of liquids, natural gas liquids creating, but the idea that we can ever get to 90, 95, 100 million barrels a day, let alone 120 or 130, which some very well-intentioned studies have shown we need as the developing world creates a minuscule amount of mobility that we do, because it's all transportation, then we basically have caught ourselves in a situation that is more dangerous than Europe faced at the end of the 30s when finally we realized that the Germans really were serious. They were gonna go to war.